Oh! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the saga. I think it's time we get down to business. As a little bit of a recap, last time, we basically figured out what this town's structure is going to look like and where they would go. And I kept this thing here, this thing, and I actually modified it a little bit since the last time. I actually wanted to have a sort of a monument here right in the middle of town, or something in the middle of town. And I decided on a monument that's going to be built today, and also I think the rest of um, the landscaping, I think that we can do it. I, I believe that we can do it today. Oh, I guess there's not much time yet. That's right, we have five seconds to do it. Oh, the stars are coming out. All right, never mind. Just go home. I live here now. Hey, look at that. So for this, I decided to go for a even number uh, diameter on this circle, this lovely circle. And it has a size, it's, it's 14 total, counting the outsides. So there's four here, two, then one, then you come over two, and then four. And it just kind of keeps going around until you have a circle. In the middle of the circle, I'm going to be placing a monument, which has nothing to do with this. So why am I in there? So first off, I'm going to get rid of these torches, because they're just going to get in the way. And if I do this right, I shouldn't actually need them. So let's see if I can do it right. I'm going to line up here. This will be the center on that side. And I hit the center on this side too. Perfect. This is going to be a stone slab that's going to be in the very center of the monument. Or the monument's going to stand right on top of it. And the rest of this inside is going to be this. Next I'll build this up just a little bit because there's actually going to be something written on the plaque in front. There's going to be a sign here, and then there's going to be a statue of sorts on top of that. I'm going to use this to temporarily get on here. But this is going to be a sword in a stone. This is the best design for a sword that I could come up with, so you're going to have to cut me some slack. I <laughs> get it? It's a, never mind. So this is five tall. With two by two, and there's going to be four of these. A very lovely upside down stair on either side, with the right side up, and then an upside down again. So I'll do that on the other side too. Super quick. You have to trust me that those are there. And I need the crafting table. At least you can kind of see right now. So that's the uh, part of the sword that's in the stone. And that's the start of the handle, which is the hardest part in design. Because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, maybe I should cut myself a little bit of slack. But anyways, enough, enough talking about cutting things. It's annoying me now. So these go on top. Let's see if I can do this. I can. We'll put a uh, another upside down on either side of this. Do a jumpy stair, jumpy stair. That. And I wonder if I should light this up while I'm here. Should I? I'll risk changing the design by putting these on top. Yes, I like that actually quite a bit. So after you don't get to see the amount of time I spent deliberating how to do this and not being satisfied, <laughs> I, you don't have to. That's the beauty of it. That's, uh, that's the magic of this whole thing. I think that will be a good sword in the stone. <laughs> Alright, that still looks swordly. So here's the next part. I just have to put a sign right in the middle, because that's all I need, to uh, commemorate. So all I have to do is uh, middle, 
So after much deliberation, I decided for a cop-out, which is to put a sign right here. And for now, I think all it will say is remember. Because I'm not sure what else to put just yet. I, I'm i going with the, the, the theme that this is a memorial for the... Uh, what it took to found this town. So uh, the uh, the fighting that had to happen and the uh, the bloodshed and all that good gooey stuff that was required. And it'll be uh, kind of like a reminder to everyone here that uh, things happened, <laughs> for, <laughs> for lack of a better word. You know what, I could actually change this up a little bit. You know what? I like it. I actually will have to commandeer one of these um, houses to make a bedroom. I'll make a house out of you yet. So I'm going to do some final terraforming now. I actually want to have this be like some sort of a strange thing. Maybe I don't want it to be a strange thing, but I want to have a, maybe a couple lakes in here. Or a couple little ponds, you know, make it make it actually look like a paradise of sorts. So in order to do that, I'm gonna get rid of these. All right, what to do? For starters, I think I don't want the houses to be that close to the water. So I'm gonna start by building a buffer of at least two blocks from any uh, house. Next, I will do my best to round out the corners. Uh, one technique is to realize that this is going to be not just a thing that you can, you know, have a straight line going. You, I, I guess you could. You could have a straight line going and then sort of curve it up and then around like this. But know that there's going to be a point in the end if you do that. So you might want to, um, like instead of going straight in like this, maybe approach it from an angle that's a little bit more out there. Oops, that's too much. And then maybe you can kind of creep in with it a little bit more. What I could actually do is make this into two different ponds, actually. So I could have this a little bit wider so that this supports a path of some sort. And then have it taper in because that's that's kind of what I'm doing when I curve it. Like, there's three there, two, one, 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 one. The more you work with uh, curves and angles, the easier this stuff sort of becomes. Let's fill, uh, take these buckets that I have here and give these like give these little uh, pond things a trial run. If I had any lily pads. I would use them. I do. I do have some uh, little pads. So since there's no real inlet or outlet in these, I guess it doesn't really matter where they go. So I'll probably just like sprinkle them around. Probably closer to the outsides. Not hopefully nothing too predictable, but it'll probably get predictable. That's pretty good. I think any more of that would actually be overkill. The next step I do is putting in the paths. Now, I've already gone over how to do this pretty extensively, or at least how I do it. So I'm probably just going to make a couple quick cuts and just show where the progress is so that um, this this video can... Uh, I can pack as much into it as I can. But there's a couple things that I will be doing that aren't the usual. The usual. And... Let's go over here, see just what's up. I'm actually going to have a couple parts that go over the water. So 
I'm just going to um, see. This is quite a bit different than your av average uh, dock or whatever. This is sort of just like a little retaining wall that the water kind of goes around, or it goes through the yeah whatever. This will probably be a part of the path. And I'll see what I do in here. I think these will do nicely. Nothing too crazy. This is going to be just enough to kind of break up the monotony of having a uh, a path that just is the same the entire, all the everything. So uh, next I'll cut to the ground looking with the, the first step, which is uh, for a bit of a refresher, just digging a path where I would walk and replacing this with a uh, coarse dirt. So here's the first part. The paths are in and they uh, lead to all the houses. This is where they're all pretty much the same. They're just trying to go to the places that need to be gotten to. A couple key notes. Most of the paths try to utilize these, uh, the structures here, and kind of pass around here, just the places where you'd think there'd be more foot traffic. And also to the uh, to the houses, but those are going to probably just stay dirt paths. Uh, also, the path up here circumvents the whole village and just goes straight to here and then on. And I kind of like that. So the next part is to uh, use gravel. To, uh, basically repeat the same process, but fill in the spots with gravel. So basically just uh, action like I haven't even done this yet. Like this, and well, it's got to go where I want it to go. We end up with sections like that. So uh, the next part after all of this will be placing in of the cobblestone for the even more uh, sanctioned or important parts of the path. I believe those will be along here. In there, and maybe there, I think. I think, yeah. I decided to go with cobble for just around this little area here, along here, connecting to that path, and all the way to that place. So, now that the paths are all in, the second part will be figuring out what views I think are important. Oh, yes, I also enjoy uh, putting in half slabs of various things, this time mostly wood just to go between the levels on the more official paths. But first, but first, let's talk about this view. This is the one that when you walk in from the forest path, it's like, okay, that's pretty cool actually that you can see that from there. Oh yeah, I remember actually way back when I made this, I was like, okay, maybe you can see something. You might be able to see it from there. So anyways, you come out here, and it opens up and you can see what do we want to see well this is this is the spot that we come out and it would be cool if we could see this path going in and we probably keep seeing this keep seeing this and maybe even glimpsing that the memorial in the middle so those are the main things that I'd want to keep vis visible visual and visible. Another key point happens around here. When you come around here and you realize, okay, this is the town. I don't know if it's going to happen here or here. Probably want it to be like here, maybe. I'll split the difference. So I want to maintain visual eye contact probably between these two and the memorial there. I'm not going to put a pillar there because the memorial is its own thing. Um, I guess I'll go see what's over here. I guess I might as well make this uh, a point of interest too. So the memorial can be seen. Uh, if someone's there, they can turn around and see this place. Other than that, I think there's only really these four, counting that, things that I have to worry about as far as views. So the next step, which is planting the trees, which are all the saplings are in there, the locations of the trees, since they're all going to be the tall ones like those that I'm going to force grow, are going to be anywhere that isn't blocking these views. So like if I'm here, 
I'll think, all right, well, I need to keep maintain this, maintain this, and maintain this. Everything else can have a bunch of tall trees. And if you didn't remember the method for this, I'm gonna I'm gonna put one right there, I think. So I, I learned this method from a a Coop Dizzle, a YouTuber by the name Coop Dizzle, and he has a quick uh, nature thing video, quick nature tips or whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll link it again in the description. But I also talked about it on um, the the other episode I made where I was doing stuff like this, and this is a bad example, like it was last time. This is a dwarfed tall tree. It's still a tall tree, but it's a dwarfed tall tree. So, so if you bone meal with this setup, eventually, uh, and I stress the eventually part, get a tall tree. There we go. Magnificent. And so let's see if it fits the criteria. Just barely. I'll have to see. Um, so that doesn't block that, and which is good. It doesn't block that because it's whatever. I wonder if this is in the way. Ooh, it kind of is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these branches here and leave the rest of the tree. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these towers all over the place and put the saplings down when it's when I'm good and ready. Ta-da! Oh, wait. All right, here we go. So, those are in, and that fills it out quite a bit. I forgot to mention a few things, though. One is that I'm really trying to keep, uh, maintain the view of this mountain over here, so I didn't put any trees there. Probably should have mentioned that. But, I'm happy with how the views were kept. Like, when you're going through here, just, you know, you have to look around that, but you can see the house the whole way. Um, it's okay if there's a couple trees in the way, and actually, I decided it's okay to have a few things blocking that statue. Because when you come over here, I actually really like how this feels, even with those trees kind of in the way. Because then that means that you could uh, be sort of drawn in, like, oh, I wonder what this is. And then when you come here, you're like, oh, that's what this is. <laughs> The houses are looking nice, the ponds look good, the areas where you walk around the town, the houses, trees filled in quite nicely. I like these, they're already coming together. It's feeling good. Also over here, I went ahead and filled out the rest of this forest. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So I'm not going to cut back until I do the last three steps, which are put in the bushes, put in the bushes, uh, change around the ground, like add in any splotches of uh, coarse dirt or gravel that I, I want, just in random areas, and then uh, use the bone mill to fill out the rest of the uh, grasses. And then we'll, we'll get a grand tour. <laughs> so before I give the big reveal, I'm going to give a few uh, before and afters just to... Uh, See, you know, you can see the, the houseway over there. Or I'm going to give you a series of before and afters just to see uh, how much this place has changed. From, uh, let's see, when when was it? So you're walking around, and you're like, oh, this is a nice town. Oh, I wonder what's over here. Let's see, you can't really see much. I guess you can see that, which is interesting. Maybe I can have something right in the middle. And then, oh, it opens up and it's the town. Whoa. Wow, that was actually quite a few months ago. Uh, whoops. But whatever, we're, we're done now. We're, we're, we got it now. We're good. <laughs> almost. Almost good. So anyways, here this is now. And boom, here's the village. And there's, you can see the hill. I didn't mind having a few trees there. Um, I actually decided to only have this partially visible, like this, uh, the center monument here. All the way along here, there's at least something sort of blocking it. And this is all on purpose. So that when you come into view here, it's like, oh, it's still blocked. 
Still blocked. Okay, there, you see the whole thing now. Like, I kind of like that, having it only revealed at the end the whole thing. And speaking of this little walk down, I like that that place is in view. And there's even trees around it to kind of, you know, make it fit in. For some reason, I really like this spot here. I have no idea why. But it just, it feels nice. Like, I was going to put a tree here in the middle or some bushes, but, like, having it open, I have no idea why. Anyways, you come up here, everything looks nice and good. I really like how these turned out. And, you know, usual stuff. Patches of uh, ground, grass, trees going along the outsides. So there's places to go if you want. I should probably... Oh, well, there's no real order to go through this. I probably could have put more bushes and stuff in here, but I decided not to for now. They're kind of around the outsides. I guess there's more in here. But this is um, kind of what we got going. Ah, yes, I made it. <laughs> Bring that full circle. And I also switched uh, this plaque to this side instead of this side, so that when you walk up to it, if there wasn't an ender chest in the way, it would seem much more centered. In fact, this is the... yeah. I'll pick that up later. So this is what it should look like as you're walking toward it. It's a bit more, uh, a bit more better. And of course, you can see the place there. The trees don't get in the way, for the most part. Same this way. And all in all, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy because this place is done. Well, the houses, anyways. There's no inhabitants yet. The inhabitant, the inhabitants are still imaginary. But maybe that'll change soon. And I think I'll have one last look at that spot. And you'll see why I saved that. And voila! So this is what is going on. And I think it turned out really nice. That's right. That was the view where I terraformed everything at. And I must say it looks quite... I'm very happy to see it is uh, finished. It's looking good. It blends into the next area. We're all one big happy family. And I think that concludes everything here. Until next time, this has been Red McNed. Hopefully I'll see you. Bye!